institutions. They're now trying to say, hey, we've got a really clever idea for the cost of living crisis. Right. Eat cereal for dinner. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist well, did supposed fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to chat through some of the stories, here to rant, rave, and share some communal catharsis. You're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Catharsis, I hope so, uh, but I'm not optimistic. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we have a very fast half an hour to Do get you know, through. Sitting next to you half an hour every morning, during this process keeps my mental health intact. Yeah, we, we, we've got to be on, on, our, on, on our top games every morning. Get off uh, so let's go. Uh, uh, oh right. my God, I cannot <laughs> believe this. Abdul Azidi, who I think will now uh, dispense with the niceties, was the Clapham alkaline chemical attacker, uh, who of course uh, looks as if he threw himself into the Thames. Uh, and killed himself after attacking that poor lady uh, and her two children uh, in Clapham in January. Uh, well, we learned because of that the extraordinary process of his uh, repeated failures to get uh, uh, asylum here in this country. He's from Afghanistan, of course. Uh, he then converted to Christianity uh, and a Baptist minister called Reverend uh, Roy Merrin sort of basically sponsored him and uh, he kept going back and back and back appealing, uh, denied, denied, denied. The judge said that this guy isn't honest, he doesn't tell the truth. He then went back uh, having converted to Christianity, allegedly. Converted. We've got some pictures of this uh, magical religious moment. There it is. Uh, by the way, he was buried as a Muslim, told his mates he was still a good Muslim. So if you think he converted to Christianity, uh, I, I'm sure you were at my birth yesterday uh, because you must have been born yesterday. But seriously, uh, this is the most absurd thing. Uh, the judge wasn't keen on giving this guy uh, uh, asylum, quite rightly, because he was a convicted sex offender. Right. After he became a uh, convicted sex offender, uh, a uh, vicar every day when he went to church would accompany this guy because he had to protect the women in the congregation. He he became, Ridiculous. he got convicted for a sex offence and uh, some stupid minister, reverend, Baptist, whatever he was, escorted this guy to the church to protect the women in the congregation. And subsequently, uh, this guy, Roy Merrin, said he's honest, he's a great Christian, uh, he's helping other Christians. What's that got to do with whether or not you can stay in this country? This guy did not properly convert to Christianity. Christianity. Yep. He was a sex offender yep. and we let him stay. What the hell is going on? Well, I'll tell you what is going on because this has been something I've wanted to say for a very long time. Here we go. This ridiculous system of mass inward migration from cultures in the world who don't share our Western values. They might pretend to by faking conversion to Christianity, but they don't. The people who lose out in all of this are women. Women are the ones whose lives are endangered, as was this woman's life. Women are the ones who are facing higher cases of rape. A report in Sweden shows that 50% of rapes that have been committed in recent years have been done by people who have freshly come to the country. That is not saying that anyone from a different culture who comes to this country is automatically a rapist. But let's be real. When I walk up and, up and down the streets of London and get followed home by creepy individuals, they don't tend to be people who I recognise as being people born, raised and bred here. They're people from other cultures and I am fed up with women's safety and women's security being mortgaged at the altar of political correctness when it comes to this immigration, this fake asylum seeking nonsense. It's got to stop. Women deserve to be safe. Uh, okay. Uh, Reverend Marin uh, told the court uh, when he appeared uh, for 
uh, uh, Abdul Azidi uh, that uh, he'd uh, attended tribunals for four other asylum seekers, all of whom were successful. Uh, we should try and get hold of uh, Reverend yeah. Roy Merrin uh, because he's a sucker for. and he's an idiot. Well, also, uh, can I just say that, that this judge, W.K. O'Hanlon, he sat there with notes from the Home Office that saying this guy is faking his... Christianity, you know, he's trying to pull the other one, um, and then decided to change his mind. I mean, the buck also stops with the judge here. I'm not giving this uh, vicar a get-out clause. He shouldn't have anything to do with this. I know it might be the Christian value that everyone should be granted redemption. I am a Christian. But at the end of the day, the judge should have seen this guy is a sex offender. He's faked Christianity. Off you go, sunshine. Uh, indeed. The judge uh, the reluctantly, I think it was his fourth attempt, to uh, get, be granted asylum. The judge reluctantly in the end said, oh, well, OK, but this guy isn't very honest. That's terrific, isn't it? Uh, this is what uh, the Reverend Roy Merrin told the tribunal. Uh, Abdul has established a good relationship with the other church members and is always willing to help as required. Apart from that, Abdul has been ready to share his faith in Christ with non-Christians. He was buried as a Muslim. He's not a Christian. When he was You're asked, an idiot, Mr Merrin. When he was asked to name disciples, he managed to conjure up three names, one of which was Jacob. Yeah, you've really done your Bible studies, haven't you? Yeah, he couldn't name the disciples. Uh, and uh, the church is doing this too much. This is the Baptist church. The C of E is doing it as well. We heard that in Parliament last week. Uh, they've got to stop doing this. I don't mind that the church, uh, the Baptist, the C of E, if they want to uh, convert people to Christianity or to pretend that they have, go ahead. But do not make this a factor don't involve into yourself in whether or not these people are allowed yeah. to stay in this country. It should be irrelevant. It yeah. should not matter that, Will, that Abdul had a good relationship with other church members. Jesus what has himself, that got to do Jesus with it? himself said, leave unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Politics, religion, separate. Yeah, yeah. So, church, stop doing this. Stop interfering. Home office, be fit for purpose. And uh, vicars, government policy, vic think about women. Vickers, uh, well, there's, I'm a man. I'm feeling left out here. Let's move on. Uh, channel crossings. Uh, now, um... We've found out now that uh, the arrivals, there have been uh, dozens more came across the day before yesterday. Uh, they were aboard ashore in Kent after crossing the Eng English Channel. Uh, among them were young children uh, being supported by uh, staff as Border Force vessels uh, escorted them in to uh, Britain, uh, that into Dover Harbour, in fact. Uh, that means that so far 4,306 people have crossed the channel, which is 10% up on last year, and also uh, 2,000 in this month of March alone right. have crossed, and we're not even en near the end of the month. We've got another week to go. So uh, the boat crisis, the migrant crisis, is rocketing. Yeah, I, uh, I notice Rishi's not talking about oh, that. Oh, yeah, he hasn't got anything to say, that's why. I think it's blimmin' awful people are putting kids on these boats. If you're a parent, would you put your kid on one of those boats? Probably not. Uh, you also have to question, actually, how much children are being used as pawns in this wider game, because I'm sure that there's a sort of suggestion that if you happen to come across with a minor, your asylum application may be expedited, you may be treated more kindly, who knows? But uh, it's utterly tragic. Children shouldn't be being imperiled in this situation at all. And there's a big story waiting as well about what's happening to some of these children, because a lot of them go missing yeah, when they the, come By the way, country. something like 80% of everyone that comes across in these illegal vessels, these dinghies and small boats, are young men between the age of 18 and 34. They are economic The ones migrants. who should be staying They're at home to rebuild their migrants. country and protect their wives and their children. Yeah, but, no. They're just coming they're to get behind and come here. They're coming, they're coming here uh, to get jobs. It's as simple as that. Uh, uh, economic migrants. Now, uh, let's talk about the bridge, the broken bridge. Uh, big drama yesterday, of course, as the key bridge in Baltimore Harbour mm. sensationally collapsed after it was hit by a cargo ship. Uh, what has emerged since then? As this drama was unfolding, uh, there was this dramatic conversation going on between the cops. Uh, this was a, would have been about uh, 6.30 in the morning their time. There it goes. Uh, can we hear the cops as they speak? Have we got that? I need one of you guys on the south side, one of you guys on the north side, hold all traffic on the key bridge. Uh, there's a ship approaching that just lost their steering. So that until you get that under control, we got to stop all traffic. 213 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. Simple dispatch is direct. That's correct. First time. Do we know all traffic was stopped? I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. 
That's extraordinary, isn't it? But what was really interesting, Alex, was at the beginning of that conversation, this senior officer is obviously not on the scene. Mm. Uh, He's saying, oh, there's a ship that's uh, lost control. It's lost its steering. So that seems to be what happened. Mm. Uh, And we've now poured over these videos uh, encyclopedically, and you can see that the lights on the boat keep going on and off. So it's having some sort of power issue. Looks as if the steering wasn't working. Uh, But still, for me, I mean, a terrible event, obviously, but still for me, it's the dramatic way in which this bridge just collapsed like a deck of cards. Well, actually, you know, thankfully the crew on board (laughs) alerted, put out that mayday call early enough that police were able to go and close the roads onto that bridge. There were some cars already on it, but actually the vast amount of vehicles were prevented from getting on it before that bridge ended up collapsing. Because of the early uh, mayday call by that crew, uh, what we know today, I think, is rescuers are going to try and board the vessel to get to essentially what is uh, that huge cargo ship's black box to see what went on, what sort of system failure led to this, led to it getting out of control and hitting Mm. um, the the support of that bridge and bringing it down. It's uh, an utterly astonishing tragic, unprecedented turn of events. We don't have things like this very often. Um, but it seems to me the sort of uh, sense of the crew and putting out that mayday call and the quick response of the police actually would have saved many lives in this yeah, situation. Yeah, but also it was very, very early in the morning their time. I think it was like 1.30 in the morning. So not many people around. But the people who were on that bridge were a collection of construction workers mm. who were pouring uh, concrete into potholes. You can tell it's not in Britain because we, t- t- we just leave the potholes there. Uh, but there they were. Six of them uh, are now thought to be dead. Uh, massive search uh, for everyone that fell into the water. There were vehicles below the uh, water as well. Uh, the search continues, but it looks so far as if we can say at well, least six people yeah. six people died. Uh, and uh, I, I just think we have to ask more questions about the bridge. Why did it collapse like that? It's called a, a, a truss steel yeah, bridge, well, a steel truss bridge or something. When that was built 50 years ago, the size of cargo ships wasn't a 1,000 feet long. They didn't have as many shipping containers on as that um, Brazilian ton Nessie. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's sort of... It's whether these things are still fit for purpose and how to avoid a, a terrible tragedy like this happening again. A uh, real disaster. We'll keep you posted uh, with that on Crosstalk this afternoon. 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. Yeah, Crosstalk. Cross- <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, uh, um, Rishi Sunak's disaster, his unfolding disaster. Uh, yet more cabinet resignations. Uh, the education minister, Robert Halfen, skills minister, actually, is uh, Robert Halfen, uh, sensationally resigned yesterday and said he would not stand at the next election. So he's quit the cabinet and he is the 63rd Conservative MP Mm. to stand down at the next election. Meanwhile, James Heapy, who's the Armed Forces Minister, he has already indicated he was leaving, uh, but he quit his post in the Cabinet yesterday as well. So Rishi, there's a a sense that Rishi, all around Rishi, is this disintegration. Everything is disintegrating. Uh, He is in a real, real mess. And uh, he probably won't want to pay attention to the latest polling that's come out from uh, YouGov, which is showing actually that in the red wall, more to- uh, people who voted Tory in 2019 are now backing Reform UK. And when it comes to the general population, more men back Reform UK than they do uh, the Conservative Party. So it is, it's all beginning to fall apart for Mr Sunak. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want to be a cheerleader for your lot, but uh, I hope Reform UK do really, really well to send a message to people like Sunak and Cameron that if you're not Tories, Tories won't vote for you. Uh, how Makes dare sense. you How dare you disguise yourself as Conservatives and then keep putting the taxes up and sort of banning kids from smoking and things like that? You know, honestly, you don't even know what conservatism is and that's why people are turning <laughs> to a party <laughs> that I think probably talking, encompasses real Tory right, values. Yeah, talking about gaslighting, something I often claim the Conservative Party do. Do you remember the leadership debates when uh, Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak were both trying to out-Thatcher each other? It's basically some sort of strange... We'll destroy China. ...seance in Thatcher... <laughs> cosplay. Or destroy um, China. Yeah, one of the big uh, points of contention was who was going to be toughest on China? Let's have a look. Uh... Indeed. Uh, 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 Grant Shapps is now calling for more defence spending. Rishi Sunak incredibly uh, claimed to the Liaison Committee. The Liaison Committee, by the way, is a collection of puffed-up, pompous backbenchers who think they're important. None of them have ever been ministers. No one quite knows what it's for. Uh, Boris Johnson used to screw up every time he sat before it. Uh, Rishi Sunak is much better at these kind of events and uh, he didn't really say anything. But incredibly, 
Incredibly, he claimed that Britain was robust on China. Uh, take it away, Rishi. So I'm entirely confident that our approach to dealing with the risk that China poses is, uh, is very much in line with our allies and in most cases goes further in protecting ourselves. He thank clearly you. doesn't, but thank you. Well, there you go. There's a sort of extremely uh, sharp tooth response of stopping two people from travelling to the <laughs> UK. People. You know, industrial Ooh. level state backed espionage, uh, hacking into the private information of 40 million people. But let, let, I do want to see what he said in 2022 because he claimed, Mr. Sunak, that he was really tough on China. Come on, Rishi. What we do need to do is acknowledge that China is a threat to our national security, it's a threat to our economic security. And that's why, as Chancellor, I was pleased that we could put forward something called the National Security and Investment Bill. And that gives us the powers as a country to protect ourselves against countries like China who are trying to infiltrate our companies and steal our technology. Yeah, well, oh, not just deal. our technology, mate. Gonna steal a lot more than that, sunshine. Yeah, Rishi, you've been utterly useless with China, uh, and uh, getting uh, Cameron in was not a great idea no. because his track record with China is uh, naive to Lord say the least. face of to, Ping to, to say to say the least. So you've got a bu bunch mm -hmm. of these China phobes who uh, just really are not doing very well at all. Meanwhile, I'm very disappointed in Sunak about this. He's piled the pressure onto Johnny Mercer, the Veterans Minister, uh, to obey a judge's order and name the whistleblowers who told him about alleged murders, uh, war crimes in Afghanistan by British SAS troops, actually. Uh, so soon that's saying, oh, you've got to tell the judge who it is. Well, Johnny Mercer is a man of honour. As I said yesterday, uh, he has been put in a position that many journalists find themselves in mm. when you are told to reveal your sources to the police, to politicians, to whoever, and we never do because we've done a deal. We've done a, uh, it's a sacred pact for journalists. You don't reveal your sources. And I think Johnny Mercer feels very much the same about these whistleblowers. Yeah. And I respect him for not caving. And he's got until April the 5th. Otherwise, he may end up in court. And Rishi should have stood by his minister. Well, let's listen to Lord Richard Dannett yesterday, his former head of the armed forces, yeah. who also thinks that Johnny Mercer is doing the right thing. Absolutely. The information which was given to Johnny Mercer, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, uh, has been passed completely to the inquiry. So the inquiry has got that information available to it. Now, the reason why Johnny Mercer does not want to give the names of those who gave him the information is because he wants to respect the principle of whistleblowers uh, having the right and the freedom and the opportunity to bring their concerns forward to a responsible person, like a government minister, that information to be passed on but to have their identities protected. And that's the point of principle on which Johnny Mercer is standing. And I think he's right. I think he's right too. And the problem we've got with Rishi Sunak is this is probably a guy who's never had a school detention in his life. Do you know what I mean? He's probably never got lower than an A grade. He's just like, oh, the rules. Everyone's got to follow the rules. He can't think for himself. Yeah. He doesn't have any backbone. All he cares about is image and reputation. Or a judge says so. The UN says so. The ECHR says so. Show some spine. Yeah. Have jo some principle. Jo Johnny have some conviction. Johnny Mercer's a military man. He's a man of honour, uh, yeah. and uh, he, he's he, he's made a sacred pact with these people, and I don't expect him to give these no. names over. And I'm very, very disappointed with Sunak for piling pressure on Johnny Mercer to, to, to well, not surprised, but to tell him <laughs> to not do the decent thing. Come on, yeah. Rishi, come on. By the way, uh, something yeah. that I did want to mention to you—it's not on our list, but uh, oh, I love you, going off. Did this. you know off that uh, the first few days, uh, or oh, towards the end of last week, and first couple of days of this? This week, uh, the Russians uh, are thought to have bombarded 1,600 aircraft oh, over blockers, Europe uh, with jamming equipment, cyber attacks, yep. uh, causing all sorts of problems. Oh. So just as the Chinese are doing it, the Russians are well, doing well, it. Well, too. with that story, I love the fact it's not on the list, but let's talk about it anyway. Yeah. That's actually super dangerous. Should have been because on actually, the list. When you jam uh, satellite signals to aeroplanes, it means their radars don't work and there could be mid-air collisions. So Russia is really uh, showing what it could do, basically saying, we could kill multiple people and bring down aircraft if it comes anywhere near us. Um, yep, yeah, got to take those threats seriously. Yeah, that is far more serious. Uh, Puff Sean Coombs Diddy Daddy, whatever he's calling himself <laughs> right now. Why do these people keep changing their names? I don't care what your name is, mate. Stop changing it all the time. Last time I heard it was P Diddy, or is he Puff Daddy? I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's not like we're in a rave. There's something funny going on. Yeah, the light it's and like it keeps flashing on and off. It's, it's like that you know, time in the morning.
Puff no, Daddy's uh, come to work in the Puff lighting Daddy, department. Puff Daddy, Sean Diddy Coombs, uh, has had two, two of his homes in Los Angeles and Miami uh, ra raided, uh, searched by Homeland Security Investigations agents on Monday. Uh, and uh, a former uh, sort of work colleague of his claims that uh, Puff Diddy uh, was responsible for sex trafficking uh, and uh, using prostitutes, uh, throwing these massive parties at his two homes, and it was all very illegal. Puff Diddy, of course, uh, vehemently denies this. There are no charges against him so far. This is a civil action. Uh, but uh, in 2007, Prince Harry got photographed with him, and uh, actually Prince Harry's name crops up in the legal papers saying that uh, Coombs, Puff Daddy, uh, used people like, uh, there's William as well there, used people, William's name does not crop up in the legal papers. That's uh, Kanye West, Puff Daddy, and of course Harry and William. Uh, but Harry is mentioned as one of the people that Coombs used to legitimize himself, mm. to make himself seem as if he moves. And uh, now, let's be fair to Harry, it's 2007. He's thought to only have met him once. This is at Wembley after a concert. So uh, in many ways, I think we have to uh, uh, be careful about Harry. He hasn't here. done anything but wrong. He's, but, he's been, but, but his name has been dragged into this. I think the problem, the problem we have in general in the West and probably all over the world is as soon as someone's got money in the bank account and an iota of celebrity, they seem to be bestowed moral virtue and righteousness, which they probably don't have. Puff Daddy's a guy who sang I'm a bad boy for life. His music videos clearly showed what he thought about women, which is they're there to be objectified, through these lavish parties of all sorts of scantily clad fillies knocking about. And yet politicians <laughs> and, you know, all these sort of bigwigs uh, all flock around and because he's Puff Daddy, therefore he must be wonderful, therefore he must be someone we've got to be seen with and alongside. You know, every single time they make the same mistakes, whether it's Jeffrey Epstein in our own country, Jimmy Savile, People just seem to turn a blind eye to the lascivious and lurid behaviours of big celebrities because they've got money and wealth. Do they really need to have influence? No. Sometimes open your eyes because people are putting on display very clearly the sort of lifestyle they lead. And be, be careful who you go to meet. And if you've got money, uh, people with money get away with more than people without money. That's the way of the world. Uh, and if you've got billions of dollars like uh, Coombs, you can gather around you all these big names, yep. these big stars, and, they and all you just look flop. like you're the top of the idiots. kind of social pile. Uh, he stands accused of some very serious crimes, but he denies Now, talking them. about big money. Yeah, <laughs> now, now, uh, yeah this, this guy, this is interesting, this, uh, Alex, because... Uh, his pay deal, it's almost as big as mine. It's a guy, <laughs> called, guy called Chris O'Shea. Uh, he's the uh, chief executive of Centrica, which, among other things, makes him the boss of British Gas. Uh, last year, uh, 2022, the last time it was recorded, he earned a feeble £4.5 million. Pounds. I'm very happy to say that this year, 2023, uh, he got a £4 million pound pay rise and went up to £8.2 million. Pounds. Is he that good? Well, I'm... <laughs> He clearly is uh, getting a lot of money because of that invasion of Ukraine, so slow clap to you and your abilities as the chief executive. But it's things like this that do make me get my left-wing hat on a bit, and I go, it's all very well having <laughs> a very small privatised and profit. <laughs> You'd be surprised. That hat sometimes comes out my drawer and it's a giant sombrero. But um, when, when I look at things like this, when I... Well, you know, I don't mind a bit of that. I love a bit of that. Uh, when, I, when I look at stuff like this, it does make me think something's very wrong in the world when Mrs Miggins can't afford her heating, and this geezer with his hipster moustache who looks like he probably joins pro-Palestine protests at the weekend but probably doesn't at all um, is raking in eight million quid I mean come on there's got to be some common sense applied to capitalism a little degree of compassion on some level and go well you know loads of people are struggling to pay their bills right now you taking home eight million pound is just obscene I mean it, these chief execs if you're getting two million quid you're doing very well you can afford private jets and mansions and swimming pools Eight million. You don't need it. The brightest and the best don't demand being paid that much. It doesn't have to be a race to the bottom of how much you can pay people. It just doesn't. It, it really beggars belief. And actually, that leads on to the next story. When well, I hang on Mrs. a second. Miggins, I'm, I'm, uh, 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 Gary O'Shea said uh, in January, told the BBC that his then four million pounds, or he had a five point nine million package going on then. Uh, he said that his pay was impossible to justify. It's now eight point two. He million. said his pay but was everything impossible. You said yeah, yeah, yeah. He said his pay was impossible to justify. Now he's on 8.2 million. Uh, I, t I absolutely share your opinion there. But if anybody wants to pay me 8.2 million pounds a year, 
I am available. Uh, let's talk about Kate Gallery, yeah. a very moving documentary. Well, this night is interesting. We were just talking about Mrs Miggins not being able to pay energy bills, and it turns out Kate Gallery herself says she couldn't afford to have the heating on last October. Such was the cost of care for her poor late husband, Derek Draper, who, of course, uh, died after years of long COVID. Um, he was, of course, in a coma at one point in hospital, came out, multiple heart attacks, just dreadful condition. Yeah, and it turns out that he apparently wasn't poorly enough to be it's afforded domiciliary care, which is mad. How ill do you have to be? And Kate, people go, well, she must be earning loads of money. It's fine for her. No, it costs so much money. She couldn't put the heating on. Uh, Mr O'Shea with his £8 million salary it's can maybe help. Maybe can help but, Kate know, out. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's have a listen to uh, Kate talking about her ordeal uh, last night on ITV. It's care costs more than my salary from ITV. And that's before you pay for a mortgage, before you pay for any household bills before you pay for anything for the kids. So we're at a crunch point. I am in debt and I, I can't earn enough money to cover my debt because I am managing Derek's care. It's costing her £16,000 a month to care for Derek after mm. he got out of an NHS hospital. That's the point. Right. The point is, surely, this guy was dying. He did yeah. die. Surely that care should continue. He was nice enough to give up a hospital bed. He could be treated at home, but surely the NHS should be paying it for his really care. It really and makes you wonder. The average person, yeah. how on earth do they afford yeah. the bills? Kate gets good money, and she's broke now. She's a million and a half quid in the red. Uh, and she had to pay £16,000 every That's single month uh, to pay for Derek. That's uh, Kate Garraway, Derek's story. Well worth a look. Uh, now, uh, let's finish on ah, Alan Titchmar, who is apparently a danger and in, he's a, a, he wore seditious jeans, seditious jeans. Uh, on a programme uh, in North Korea. Incredibly, North Korea appeared to buy from the BBC or his ITV his gardening programmes and he's dressed in jeans and they, as you can see there, they faded out the jeans because jeans apparently are a symbol of Western imperialism. I know. I mean, it's, it's interesting. You don't really know much of what goes on in North Korea. And it's quite eye-opening to learn that uh, clearly they were being taught to become yeah. self-sufficient. Very communist, that, isn't yeah. it? You know, in your gulags, why don't you follow yeah. Antich Master's advice on Absolutely. how to sow seeds? And, I mean, it's uh, bad, enough in, it's bad enough in North Korea as it is. And now they've got to watch Alan Tishmarsh. By <laughs> Poor North Korea. Shame. Sadly, though, Alex, we've come to the end of this show. Thank you for tuning and you know what to do at one o'clock. You've got to tune in to the one and only... Rostock! Up next is Peter Carwell, sitting in for Julia Hartley Brewer. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on what <laughs> just happened. <laughs> Ooh, <we're missing. laughs> there was a 